he is installing a DC to DC charger so that when we're driving, we can charge our solar batteries. He walks up and he's saying something, and I'm like, what is that? And I can see something like black in the front of the cart. And he's like, somebody left these. I honestly think that my entire attitude towards the exercise has changed as a result of yoga. If you don't like thinking on your feet and dealing with unexpected hiccups and things going wrong, don't full-time RV. woke up bright and early today so that we could get over to a muffler shop because Stuart has a leak in his exhaust that he needs to get fixed before we need to haul the trailer uh, anymore or do any more moving things around just because it's not great for towing when you have an exhaust leak like that. So we had to get up really early because he wanted to be able to be here when they open and so we got up at 5 a.m. to hit the road. It was really nice getting to see the sunrise. I miss seeing sunrises. I don't wake up early enough most days to see them. So that was nice. But uh, now we're just sitting here waiting for the guy to show up because we got up so early that we beat him here. <laughs> How's the place? It's good. Isn't it friendly? 
Good morning everyone. So right now I'm making myself a pot of coffee. Stuart is outside finishing up some last minute things on the truck. We got a lot done yesterday. I got everything packed up in the back which I'll show you that in a second. But today what we're doing with Stuart's truck is he is installing a DC to DC charger which will run wiring from his truck battery to the charger and then wiring from there will go to the RV so that when we're driving we can charge our solar batteries. It's a little bit more involved than it ordinarily would be because we don't have just a normal battery on our RV anymore. We have a whole solar setup so there are extra steps and I'll show you guys that in a little bit but let me just show you the back. I got everything that we're going to need packed up in there and I went ahead and gathered up all the extra stuff that I thought we would need, like a tire iron, an extra bottle jack, uh, things like that, that you probably want to have if you're going to be out in the middle of nowhere. Now I've said before that I am really, really glad that we turned this bunkhouse back here into basically a utility room. I am very, very, very glad now when we're getting ready for this trip that we did that because this room is perfect for keeping the generator and our big container of dog food. And now we have these enclosed shelves, which I'm still over the moon about, but we have our generator right there. And whenever we're on the road driving, we're gonna just keep it back here because in the event that it's really, really hot and we do wanna have the AC running, we can send the shore power cable through this window, hook it up to the generator. We'll leave the window cracked so the generator can vent. And then we'll probably put a curtain up here, the one that's hanging right there to block this off so that we can cool the rest of the RV. So that's the plan there. Um, the shore power cable won't reach from the side of the RV up to the truck. I don't want to have this in the back of the truck anyway if we're like boondocking at a truck stop or a Walmart or something that just seems like you're asking for trouble. So that's where that's going to sit. And then over there is the dog's big dog food container and their bowls and everything are in there. And yeah, this whole room is very multi-purpose and I really really like it a lot. It's come in so handy and I'm still over the moon about these shelves. Hooking up the battery and we're gonna buy a plug actually to plug in the charger and all that. I think that'll be a lot RV. easier. Instead of trying to have a core that we wind through and have hanging in between. So positive's gonna go here, negative's gonna go there. So back when Stuart and I bought our batteries, we bought them from Sam's Club. And at the time we didn't have batteries to take in for the core charge, but Jesse, our in-laws, were kind enough to give us some old batteries that they had laying around and we were able to take them and turn them in and I was able to get the core charge back. It was like $77. So I'm really, really happy about that. But the best part, and this is just so random, as, as soon as I got in the truck and I was like, I can't believe this, I have to vlog this. <laughs> we grabbed a cart to put all of the batteries in. There was four and uh, Stuart like was saying something and I couldn't really understand what he was saying well, as he was walking off, back. Start off by saying that there was a cart sitting out in the in the middle of the park. Yeah, park. middle of nowhere, no, no cars around it. it. Had obviously been sitting there for a while because it was hot. And he walks up and he's saying something and I'm like, what is that? And I can see something like black in the front of the cart. And he's like, somebody left these. They were unopened at the time. A giant bag. This is over a pound of pistachios unopened until Stuart opened them just a minute ago. Unopened 
over a pound. This would be like $20, even at Sam's Club. Expensive, and someone just left them. Salt and pepper pistachios. What a freaking find. Clearly accidental. Obviously, like who would spend, like somebody just left them and forgot, like forgot about them somehow. And we were like looking around, nobody was around, nobody was near the cart, like just, just left. Just left these, and I was like, well, they're ours now. Now we have a giant ass bag of pistachios and $77 back in our banking account. It's a good day. We feel pretty good. Oh yeah. baptism. Well, if it's not another thing with the full-time RV life, it's always something else. We got back to our home base last night, and on the way, when we were at a gas station, Stuart happened to be just looking over the trailer, trying to see if anything was wrong, if everything was good, and he happened to notice that on the front axle driver's side, the tire had worn, like almost completely bald on one side of the tire. And when he looked even closer, it looked like our axle was bowed. So we think we have a bent axle. And so we didn't even unhook the truck last night. We leveled it, left it hooked up. And then and then first thing this morning, we loaded back up, packed everything up and came to, into town to a trailer and axle place. And we're hoping that they're gonna be able to fix it or know somebody in town who can replace an axle. Cause obviously we can't travel around the country with a bent axle, that absolutely cannot happen. And we have no idea how this happened because we don't overload our trailer. We never have, it has two axles and with the amount of weight that we have, it should be fine, but we still have a bent axle. My dad was saying that he's heard about it happening to other people and that it's usually something that went wrong during manufacturing. Um, it's obviously been like this for a while due to how much wear there is on the tire. So that's what we're dealing with today. And my parents are supposed to get in tonight. They're on their way. And then we're supposed to be leaving on our big trip here pretty shortly. So <laughs> it's always something. If you don't like thinking on your feet and dealing with unexpected hiccups and things going wrong, don't full-time RV. So here's the plan with our RV. Obviously we're back at our park again. Tomorrow we have to pack everything up and drop it off at the trailer place again. But luckily we found somebody who's willing to work with us and basically make an axle for us because otherwise it would take up to eight weeks for us to get a RV axle. Um, and the closest one is in Idaho, so... We're not going to Idaho on this trip. Not, not especially with the axle being the way it is right now. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know this, but trailer axles and RV axles are different sizes. They're different lengths, I guess. Yeah. And um, the guy at the trailer place is going to actually make one for us, basically. Um, he's going to take an 89 inch axle, chop it, shorten it by two and a half inches, and sleeve it, weld it up, and it'll be a roundabout way to get the problem solved, but... But it should work. It'll work. And then we, we should be good to go. So we're gonna get really, really good at packing up, moving, coming back, and setting back up again. Um, <laughs> but we'll be able to fix the problem, and it shouldn't impede us from being able to continue with our plans, which is a good thing, so... What else do we have going on today? 
We're going to drive to just outside Tyler to pick up a couple of water jugs so that we have extra water for our trip. That'll save us from having to go and fill up our fresh water tank on the RV quite as much. Um, I also need to go and get some groceries because we're a little bit short on a few things and I'm gonna make food tonight so that my family has something to eat when they get in and they don't have to worry about cooking um, the second that they get here. And other than that, there are a few little things that we need to do still on the RV to finish getting ready to go. That'll be happening today and then throughout the rest of the week. Um, the fun just never stops. We're always busy. For this week's reflection, I thought that I would talk about how my perspective around running has changed because I started running a whole lot more than I was and I honestly think that my entire attitude towards the exercise has changed as a result of yoga and I'll get into what I mean. It used to be back when I was running consistently and then I dropped off for about a year and a half, I would see it as this challenge and I would tell myself, this week I'm going to run two miles. And then if I wasn't running four miles or five miles or exponentially increasing the distance that I was running every week or couple of weeks, I would start to get discouraged and I would feel like I wasn't progressing and I wasn't doing well because I would set these goals and it was this challenge for me to meet these goals. And if I didn't meet that goal, then I was basically a failure. So I think that that's a big part of the reason why I kind of fell off of running and wasn't being as consistent with it as I would have liked. Well then I started getting into yoga and if you know anything about yoga the entire premise is that it's a journey for your body but also for your mind and it's not so much about the various poses or asanas that you can do it's about what you learn as you're progressing to that point and so that has really altered the way that I view physical fitness and exercise because it's no longer about achieving something. It's about what you learn as you are working towards a specific goal. And I found myself, when I started running again within the last few months, applying that to running. It was no longer about, oh, I need to reach two miles and then I need to be hitting four miles and then eight miles. It was just, what am I learning about myself while I am here now running? And it's not about how far I can go, but it's about the quality of the exercise that I am getting in that moment and feeling good about myself when I'm done because I just went and did something that's going to improve my health overall. The distance will come, the improvement with my running will come. The only thing that's going to make that possible is if I continue to do it. And changing my mindset around how I was running has really made the whole experience a whole lot more enjoyable because I go out and I'm just doing something enjoyable for myself, for my mind and my body. I feel good when I'm done. If I only ran two miles or if I ran two and a half miles or if I only ran a mile and a half that day, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that I'm consistently working towards improving myself. And I feel like it's really just improved everything with my mind and body and, and how I view exercise as a whole. And it's something that I've been thinking about a lot, not only this week, but previous weeks as well. And I wanted to share it because I know that physical exercise, working to improve and strengthen your body is an area where people can get really discouraged. I've gotten discouraged because I felt like I wasn't improving as quickly as I would like or wasn't hitting a particular milestone in a set amount of time that I had set for myself letting go of that need to perform has made everything a whole lot more enjoyable. And that is what I've been thinking about a lot here recently. So that's what I wanted to share for the reflection this week. Um, this is going to be a wrap up of the vlog. My parents got in last night and I cooked a meal for them and we've really just been enjoying spending time with each other and just being a family, it's been really awesome. And I'm not going to worry about vlogging a whole lot the next couple of weeks. I'll pick this up at the end whenever they leave and whenever we're kicking into gear to hit the road. So I don't even fully know what the future holds. I feel like things are just, life is on the upswing constantly. And I'm just really happy to be able to 
experience it and share it with you guys. So I hope that you've enjoyed that as much as I have and I hope that you will stick around and that I will see you for the next video. Bye.